I am awake. I am doing this much later in the day than I normally do. Very slow start to the day, but who gives a shit? We know what Monday is, and that's what we're here for. And if you remember the state we did last month, and by month I mean week. Actually, yeah, no. It's, when is July 1st? Give me a sec. Yeah, fuck no. It won't be July 1st by the time this goes up. I am incredibly dumb. Anyway, if you remember last week, we did uh, Oklahoma. So you know, we're not doing Oklahoma or any of the states that happen alphabetically before that. So that leaves a lot of states. I don't know how many because I'm not going to count. But all I do know is we're at four minutes. Game is starting and we're in the great state of Oregon. 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 Origin. There's a lot of ways to pronounce this place, and not all of them are correct. I will, if I remember, get to the proper way that at least people in the state like to pronounce their name. But anyway, as you see here, here is Oregon. Up here in what we call the Pacific Northwest, because Pacific Northwest. This region of the country. Off to the north, you've got Washington. Uh, to the west, you've got Pacific. To the south, you got a split, which almost seems directly in half, with California and Nevada. To the east, Idaho. And if you had to guess what the capital is without looking, because that would be cheating. And if you guess Portland, you're wrong. You guessed Eugene, you're wrong. You guessed Midfoot, you're wrong. And if you're like, well, yeah, then obviously it can't be Salem, because every other place on this road has been incorrect, and you would go at Bend, and you're wrong again. Capital is Salem. Um, as I try to find out exactly where we are here, uh, very much like the previous state we're in, this is another um, uh, climately diverse place, kind of like Oklahoma was, but this, I feel, will at least have a bit more of a uh, visual style change compared to some of the other places. Uh, I see a lot of mountains. I, hmm, I don't know where the halfway is. I mean, if I had to guess, it's halfway, but I don't know halfway relative to what. Or cornucopia. Uh, so I'm thinking they're both kind of small places. I'm going to click around Brothers and hopefully try to find a little bit more information about it. Um, Oregon, another place. I'm going to probably keep saying it incorrectly, and I want to make sure that I've actually uh, got the little link down below where it actually has people sit there and pronounce the correct way of doing it. But until then, I'm going to keep trying to find out exactly where we are. We're in gym town. Where only gyms live. All these cows are gym cows. We're on the gym road taking a gym, gym uh, right next to a gym car. Actually, these are all gym chucks. Um, come on, what do we got? Amanda Marga Yoga Group. We got Gym Town and Amanda Marga Yoga. Seems like quite the, uh, bet you that's a gang. I'm going to say Amanda Marga Yoga is a gang here in good old Oregon. Anyway, what the fuck am I saying? Oregon, all right. It was admitted to the estate. February 14th, 1859, as the 33rd state. Uh, before that, it was called the Oregon Territory. It's a very amb disambiguous chunk of land up here in the northwest of the state, which I believe started down here and kind of eked up a bit, almost into what Canada is now. Don't quote me on that. I think I have my uh, generalized idea here. I have no idea what the hell this is. I want to say we're closer next to mountains, but there's mountains over here and there's mountains over here, so maybe here. Just take a quick look to see if I can't see Cornucopia or halfway anywhere on here. Not seeing it. 
Oh, I did see Cornucopia. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Where was it? Get back in the state. <laughs> uh, I almost clicked outside the state. That would have been hilariously dumb. Uh, I did see Cornucopia. Where did I see it? Right there. And then I saw the uh, halfway's right there. Okay. And there's Jimtown. Cool. Some more of the general information about the state is to take a sip. Capital is Salem. Largest city is Portland. Uh, it's where that show Portlandia is based out of. Uh, total area is 98,000 square feet. It makes it the ninth largest state in area, which I never really think of Oregon being that big, but it was. Oh, cool. There was a little, little nugget of land here. That's part of Oregon. That's the Snake River, if you remember what we talked about over here in Idaho months ago. Uh, let's see here. I said elevation is Mount Hood at 11,249 feet, which is almost 3,500 meters. Lowest elevation is the goddamn ocean. So it's at ocean level. Uh, population, we've got over 4.2 million people. Makes it 27th in the country. Medium household income is about $60,000, which income rank is 21st, which is a little surprising because if you think of all the very big corporations that live in the state, which hopefully I remember to get to later. I would have thought it would have bumped up their income a little bit more. Um, generally, the state itself, very much known for um, timber and agriculture. About 60% of the state itself is still covered in woods. Uh, it's always been a huge um, part of uh, the history of Oregon is that it was always uh, port cities with trading from, uh, I think at the time, most ships were coming from Spanish ports in the Philippines, and they would come across the Pacific. And I think generally they would kind of go for San Francisco down here, and sometimes they get wrecked and just kind of end up here up north. Um, but if you look, Columbia River here, it's one of the largest rivers in the country, actually. I forget what number it ranks. Um, you've got Vancouver and Portland that you can get some boats from the ocean right into it. Um, uh, yeah, you think of loggers, trappers. Um, mostly, like, you can look up video videos, pictures of uh, lumberjacks way back in the day, and you see, like, the uh, redwoods that they uh, would stand next to and how insanely huge those trees get. If you don't know what redwood trees are, just look them up. They're, I think they're a type of sequoia. It's a type of pine tree, and it is ridiculously huge. We've got Broken Horn Ranch with commercial Angus. I wonder if just the car horn is just always on, and it's irritating to the neighbors. Um, yeah, along with the some of the regions within um, Oregon. Oregon is, uh, you got rainforests, you have volcanoes, you've got um, dense evergreen, mixed forests, high deserts, semi-arid shrub lands, which I believe this is almost like, and this is the root symbol for the state of Oregon. Generally, all the other states we've had is either incorporated their state shape or the name in it. <clears throat> Oregon has bucked that trend and made this very hard to try to find out exactly where we are. And I see the 202, which makes me feel the 203 has got to be near it. I am not seeing it, but I'm going to continue on looking. Because, God damn it, I will find this. Okay, that's Washington. We're down here. Refocus. Here's the state. Let's start down here. Give me a... Get the 200s. 140, 205. Your number system is dumb. I've come to that conclusion. 201. But every number but 203. I got a minute left. Come on. Help me out here. 207s. I'll be very mad when I don't find this.
Come on. Show yourself, you coward. Okay, there is a nugget up here. Why am I seeing every other number but that one? This is this is infuriating. Can can you tell my voice? This is this is angry at me. <sighs> Thirty seconds left. I have not found it. I'm not going to find it. I'm mad. I am very mad. I'm gonna say we're down here because, fuck. I don't know. It's probably sharing its road with something else because roots do that. It makes me mad. Or maybe we're over here because I feel like, <sighs> okay. There's 203. Did I have a chance of ever seeing that? Potentially. I did see 204, so eh, maybe. Anyway, some more about the state. Alright, so earliest evidence of the name Oregon is Spanish origins, the origins where the term O-R-E-J-O-N, Orion, I'm guessing, comes from some historical chronicle by some guy. Um... There are also two other sources with Spanish origins, with oregano, referring to the plant which grows in the southern part of the region, oregano. It's possible that American territory was named by the Spaniards. There is a stream in Spain called the Arroyo del Oregon, which apparently is located in the province of Ciudad Real. Uh, let's see... Another early use for the name comes from something with Major Robert Rogers, which was a silly name. Um, it seems to be kind of ambiguous as far as where the name comes from. They really can't pin it down, but the Oregon Tourism Commission, present-day Oregonians province, pronounced the state's name as or never or ye gone So it's Oregon. You can just uh, Oregon. Um, if that helps you remember it, I'm going to forget in about five minutes once this video is done. But I'm not a role model. I get bad guesses in states. Um, this feels we're on the ocean, or at least close to it, because I don't really see any mountains or trees anywhere. I do want to read this sign, though. That's a handicap sign. That's not going to help me. We have mountains over there and nothing to the uh, left of us. Uh, Western Oregon Waste. Okay, so we look at that. The name of their trash company is Wow. So we're in Western Oregon. I didn't want to go there. Thank you. Get me back on this road. Oh, they just rebuilt a, uh, that looks like apartments. Also looks like hotels. Seaside Discount Cigarette Store. Look at that dog. You pet that puppy. Prom Bike Shop. Are we, like, in prom? Is that a name of a, uh, a town in Oregon? Hmm. Ocean View Resort. Uh, let's head towards the water. Maybe this will help me. These are very tiny, like, almost summer houses. I just want to get a view. What's this place look like? Uh, we've got coastal safety hazards. You can't camp here overnight. That is a cool ass view. Um, is there a place called Prom right on the water? Let's take a look. Let's just take a quick look. Go down the coast. Look for a thing called Prom. I do not see it. Okay, we zoom back out. We're still in the state. Okay, I saw that little line here. I don't know what the hell this is. Is it a trail? I don't know. Let's see. Prom, prom, prom. The sixes. It's a great name. Okay, that's the end of it. All right, so there is no prom. Fair enough. Let us back up a smidge. Look at this sign. You're going to blur me out? Just parking prohibited. All right, fine. Get me back on the road. Let's find out where we are. Head to this intersection. They've moved. 
prom bike shop. That doesn't help me. Those are some silly bikes. I'm getting very distracted, but I want to find this place. I've not had a good start to, uh, why did you put me there? Get me on this goddamn road. Come on. I see a school. This is potentially a school. Is there a sign somewhere? I don't see one. Be like on the back side of the, the school here? I got 58 seconds. All I've seen is that trash. I want to try to get to this school. Sunset family. Okay, here we go. We're on the 101. Tillamook. Okay, I did see Tillamook. There's Tillamook. 46. Warrington and Astoria. Tillamook's there. Let's look for the 101. This is the 101. Maybe we're in Garibaldi. Warrington and Astoria. Uh, where are you? I'm going to click here before I uh, forget. Cannon Beach. Let's move in a bit. Maybe we're in Tillamook Bay. Warrington and Astoria. Let's find... <laughs> I don't see you. Cannon Beach. Okay, 10 miles to Cannon Beach. So Warrington and Astoria are down here. Well, we were way up north. Next to Seaside. Silly me. Anyway, um, the geography of the state. So when I talk about the uh, rainforest, I mean, you usually associate that with hot tropical places. However, at least here in the northwest of the U.S., there are always, there are also rainforests here, but they're a lot colder. And a lot of that has to do with the, uh, what the hell is it called? Kind of like uh, what I talk about when I go down to uh, Argentina, Brazil, and you got the Andes here where you've got all the high moisture air coming from the Amazon heading to the west, and then they hit these mountains. And, I mean, you can kind of tell here, as soon as they hit um, the peaks of the Andes, the amount of rain that the clouds can hold, it has to dump it off because it's colder, it can't hold as much. And it dumps it all out before it goes over the backside of the mountains, where it's very dry uh, air and at least here in the northwest they have a word for actually what it's called and it's the Chinooks so here we go uh, Blackfoot people in the area the Native Americans here because again very much like every other place in the US as I will say probably in every other state we get to Native Americans here settlers came in kicked them out but the Blackfoot people here termed this one the snow eater, but it's more commonly known as Chinook, which or originates from the language spoken by the eponymous people in the region where uses was first derived, uh, which is near the ocean along the Columbia River, which is a little bit farther. Uh, it's right here. The strong wind, let's see here, it's a warming wind from the ocean into the interior region of the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. Strong wind can make snow one foot deep, almost vanish within a day. Snow partly melts and partly sublimates in the dry wind. Where sublimation is where it goes straight from ice to um, vapor. It's the same thing that happens if you leave ice cubes in your freezer way too long. They just eventually start to shrink. That shrink, that's called sublimation. Oh, where was I? Chinook winds have been observed to raise winter temperature often from below 20 degrees centigrade, which is for below Fahrenheit, is to a high as 10 to 20 in a few hours or days. Then the temperatures plug into their base levels. The greatest recorded change in the 24 hours was caused by Chinook winds on the 15th of January 1972 in Montana. I think I mentioned that before, where the temperature rose from 48 below to 9 in centigrade, which is 54 below to 49 in 24 hours. That's how quickly it changed. I believe it actually can call cause death because of the change, sudden change in temperature. I could be wrong. I remember hearing about that, I believe, in school at some point. It's a really crazy phenomenon. 
Uh, moving on. The climate, as I mentioned before, I mean, also different floors and faunas. This feels like a bike trail of sorts, which I think I would enjoy going on if my bike wasn't a piece of shit. I should really get that thing tuned up because it's been sitting in my closet for decades now. I think I might be stuck on this bike trail, which would kind of suck. Let's just follow it down. Hopefully it'll lead to somewhere I can get off. I mean, this could actually be cars. Yeah. Anyway, like I mentioned, the uh, giant redwoods, which are all along, I believe, Washington, Oregon, and California. But the state's also home to apparently the largest known organism in the world, which is a type of fungus called uh, Amaryllaria ostoye. Uh, let's see here. It's common in hardwood and conifer wood forests in the west of the Cascade Range in Oregon. It's just kind of looks like a mushroom. Let's see. It kind of just goes from tree to tree by going underground. And little uh, fibers and filaments, that's how it stays connected. Uh, it's known as growing the largest living organism by area. Estimated scientists as a contiguous specimen found in the Malher National Forest, which I believe, let's see if I can actually find it here. Malher Natural National Forest. Where are we? Let's click on this. You're not helpful. Let's open a link in a new tab so I can actually find this. Okay, yeah. So we're like over in this area. There we are. Mal in this area here. Uh, find it, find it, find it, find it. Where was my spot? Um, covering about 3.7 square miles, which is about 24,000 acres, 9.6 square kilometers. Just one organism, that much space. It's more commonly known as the humongous fungus. Crazy. Where the hell am I? I've been too busy talking about a giant mushroom to find where we are in here, but again, I'm used to that. I'm going to do badly. Hopefully, I might be able to find maybe a root. Around Bellwood Lane. I want to know what the name of this other one is. I don't know what flag you are. Huh, maybe it's a Methodist, Methodist flag. I could be wrong. I need a drink. Let's see. Give me... Ooh, 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 ooh. I did see... Some signage, potentially. I think this might be like an adopt a highway thing. San Solsi Drive. Ah, come on. This is probably the Kiwanis Club of Wattberg. Did you shoot? You bastards shot the name of the place it could be. Oh, man. I'm going to say we're maybe around here. We're actually maybe there. I don't know. Anyway. Let's see. I mean, you got Crater Lake there too, which is a really cool. Um, I believe it's formed in a caldera. There's also this chunk of log that keeps sinking and floating. It's really crazy. I wasn't that far off, actually. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Statehood. Here is a little blurb I wanted to cover. In December of 1844, Oregon passed its Black Exclusion Law, which prohibited Afri African Americans from entering the territory while simultaneously prohibiting slavery. Slave owners who brought their slaves with them were given three years before they were forced to free them. Any African Americans in the region after the law was passed was forced to leave, and those who did not comply were arrested and beaten. They received no less than 20 and no more than 39 stripes across their back, which is they basically got whipped. If they still did not leave, this process would, could be repeated every six months. 
Um, slavery paid, played a major part in Oregon's history and even influenced its plan to statehood. The state's territory request for statehood was delayed several times as members of Congress argued among themselves whether the territory should be <clears throat> admitted as a free or slave state. Eventually, politicians from the South agreed to allow Oregon to enter as a free, free state in exchange for opening slavery to the Southwest United States. That is a common refrain with a lot of states getting into the U.S. Just trying to strike that balance between the North and the South. Let's see here. And then the Civil War happens and... Like, figuratively, that got rid of everything, but it kind of really didn't. Um, let's see here. Oh, another interesting thing here. On May 5th, 1945, six civilians were killed by a Japanese balloon bomb that exploded near Gerhard Mountain in nearby Bly, which I believe... Gerhard Mountain. Uh, let's, let, I think I, I... Forgive me this. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, never mind. This was down there here. So, if you're not um, familiar what with the uh, balloon bombs, this was kind of a um, plan or at least a idea that the Japanese had to try to um, bomb the U.S. without really getting lives involved. It, it was more of a theory. So I'll just go over it really quick. Uh, from late 1944 to early 1945, the Japanese launched over 9,000. 300 fire balloons, of which 300 were found or observed in the U.S. despite high hopes of their designers. Balloons were ineffective as weapons, causing only six deaths from one incident in a small amount of damage. And the way it actually happened was, <clears throat> excuse me, there were some hikers out in the wood, there was six people, and they came across this strange thing on the trail and they weren't exactly sure what it was. So they went up and touched it. And then the bomb went off. Uh, their whole plan for these uh, balloon bombs were to send them, kind of like weather balloons, way up into the atmosphere, have the winds take them. And when they got to a certain point, you know, they would just either, I think the balloons would explode, and then they would fall to the earth, or they just would get, they would find their way to the um, U.S. or whatever targets they were going to, and then fall and either drop bombs on cities, forests, farmlands, anything that could potentially disrupt and cause, you know, terror with the public of just Japan's able to bomb us from all the way over here just using balloons. It was at least an attempt by them, but it was extremely ineffectual. Just because you were kind of relying on the jet stream to do the work for you, and it really eh, didn't work all that well. Still... World War II and other military theories for trying to find ways to one up yourselves against the enemy can cause come up with really strange stories, especially like with CIA trying to remote control bomb cats. Um, the movie Men Who Stare at Goats is another interesting to just some of the weird, zanier things that they would try because then they had a bunch of money they got to spend on something. <sighs> Um, let's see if I can actually do a little bit here. My score is atrocious this time. Um, Oregon is a bit of a pain trying to locate. I mean, we also didn't get all that lucky with locations, and I thought this said wash around the cock. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm tired. This looks to be a little more developed. I don't know if I'm going to find where it is. Uh, is there any other weird little... Talent clinic, huh? <clears throat> There's any other interesting places that I wanted to mention before we went? We got the Camelot there. I don't know if that's the name of the town. What are we what are we playing? Don Matthews and Hannah Gassaway. Playing Gypsy. Interesting. Apparently also oh, the City Hall. And the library. Maybe that'll tell me where we are. This is not going to help me. You are not the city hall. Let's see. Uh, library is that way. It says a talent public. 
Oh, you, why, why do you do this? Oh, my nose. I believe this is the town hall. If not, it's a, um, Jackson County Library. All right, so we're in talent. I don't know where talent is. Will I find it just by looking at it? Probably not. Hmm. Nothing really visual here. Nothing I'm seeing. Anyway, maybe we'll come across it by seeing a road sign somewhere. Let's try to get out to a main road. This does not look like a main road. Um. Ooh, this is this has got the best chance to maybe tell me where where we are. Let's get on this road. Let's get to this intersection. We've got Medford and Ashland. North Pacific Highway. Phoenix and Medford. Okay, let's look for up here in this, this chunk of the woods. Medford. How much time do I have? 50 goddamn seconds. God damn it. I'm going to put us here and maybe try to find Medford and Ashland. Oh, North 99. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 99 is not going to show up here, is it? 95. 97. Is this 90? 95? 95, where are you? I'll put us here. So I am not seeing 95 anywhere. I'm mad. I like the name of that mountain. Uh, where, where is it? Clearly visual. I just didn't go far enough down. God damn it. Oh boy. Awful score. But hey. That's what I do. I hopefully gave you at least a visual of some of the random places here. I don't know if it was the most visually representative of the country, of the state of Oregon, but it's a nice place, at least, going to see things. Um, that's going to do it for Monday. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I appreciate your time taking out of your day to watch these silly little videos. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, complaints, likes, favorite, comments, subscribes, go ahead and put them in the comments below and other all those other random buttons they tell you to press. Please do that too. Um, maybe I'll do something else this week. We'll see how the rest of the day goes. I'm a little tired, and my voice is dying. Hmm. But if not, we'll at least see you on Monday, Wednesday for some more geo guessing. Thanks again, folks. We'll see you soon.